Friday, July 5th, 3.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the ongoing earthquake aftershock situation in Southern California following the very large 6.4 earthquake yesterday that was felt in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, even going across all of the seismos up at Yellowstone Super Volcano. The earthquake aftershocks are occurring at the rate of about one per minute, maybe minute and 20 seconds on average. And for some strange reason, you can see one just occurred there. For some strange reason, they're forming a perfect seven on the map. I've never seen that. I've followed several swarms over the years. In fact, just followed one in Southern California that involved a thousand plus earthquakes. And I don't think I've ever seen any that formed linear lines just like we're seeing here. It's a perfect seven. There's no other way to describe that. More than likely, my rational thinking leads me to believe that there's a fault line that runs to the northwest, one that runs to the northeast, and they intersect each other. That's why all these aftershocks are coming on two lines, basically. And there's a few that are scattered around the area, but the majority of these quakes are on two lines, one that runs northwest and one that basically runs southwest. It doesn't really go to the northeast, so it makes a seven on the map very very interesting so that will continue guys for the next few days don't be surprised if there's not another five maybe a four involved um, like i said they're occurring there's another one right there at the rate on average of about one per minute and counting now we're over here at windy.com just going to touch on this briefly because this is a long range forecast more than likely this is going to change in some degree whether it strengthens weakens and goes away or it could stay the same i guess but it's very doubtful but windy is a very good source of information i've used it for a long time um, have a lot of respect for windy but right now the european model is suggesting the formation of a tropical storm in the gulf of mexico by thursday of next week and remaining in the florida panhandle area for several hours if not maybe a day day and a half before slowly moving inland so once again this is a long-range forecast it's a week out it can and will change but right now the model is suggesting and this is the european model the formation of a tropical storm in the gulf of mexico by thursday of next week if we step it forward into friday you'll see what i mean it just kind of lingers along the coastline Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, into Friday. Now we're into Friday morning, Friday afternoon, moving into Friday night. Now it decides to kind of make some sort of a landfall. And you can see it going up into southeast Alabama, into Georgia. And now we're looking at Saturday morning. So beginning Thursday afternoon, around lunchtime, clear into Saturday morning, it's still there in the same general area. So again, this is just something to look out for more than likely this is going to change. So we'll keep a very, very close eye on that though because that's in a very delicate area. That's the last place we wanna see any type of tropical storm activity. And I, and I would be surprised anyway if one would form there because of the dust. There's this transatlantic dust train coming over here from the Western Sahara that you can see dust right there in Louisiana and Alabama right now at nullschool.net. And this is what's coming in the next day, day and a half. It's already making its way over here through the Atlantic into the Caribbean, up into the Gulf of Mexico. So I'll be kind of surprised if that does form. But either way, we're going to keep a very close eye on that just in case. But there's a lot of dust on its way that will more than likely put a lid on that situation. But the earthquake swarm, look for that to continue. And for whatever reasons, it's making a perfect seven on the map. Now I wanna share with you guys some pictures and video that have been sent in. This is from back in, I wanna say May 30th. These pictures were sent in, I had, I've had these for a while from near Redding, California of that very large supercell thunderstorm. Had those photos for about a month. This was sent in by Jamie from Pueblo, Colorado. Big high profile double rainbow. Beautiful clouds here sent in by John C. Awesome purple sky photo taken by Savannah from Ontario. We've got all kinds of colorful skies. Now we've got orange skies. Montana sent in by Jasmine. Now we've got another shelf cloud. We've been seeing a lot of these lately. I want to pause it here for just a second. This was taken up in Massachusetts or right off the coast of Massachusetts. And you can see a big shelf cloud out over the ocean. Beautiful photograph, actually. 
Mammatus clouds, Colorado Springs, photograph sent in by Tina. Look like cotton balls in the sky. This is a good photograph here sent in by Gary, who was driving down the interstate when what he describes as he's thinking that was about 20 miles wide based off of his observation from this area. And he looked up and saw a cloud that looked like a big mothership. That's what compelled him to take the photograph. So that's the original. Here I've put it in black and white, just trying to pull the features forward of the, of the big cloud. Here it is in a x-ray format, and here's a negative format. That's a spectacular storm cloud brewing there over central Illinois. Odessa, this is a still image from a video he sent in. By, that was a video by, or a picture by Andy Ray. I've also got a video. And Zach Washington, looks like an elephant in the sky. Excellent observation. Good photograph. Another look at this weird cloud up in Redding, California that spawned tornado warnings. And look at that thing. It's just a very photogenic cloud. Wisconsin, a couple of shadows in the sky. Picture sent in by Lee. She sent in a couple of photographs, actually. Gabriel from Garden Grove, California, noticed a big halo around the sun. Double, double rainbow from Pasadena, Texas. Sent in by Cab Blues. Here's a video sent in from Florida. This was sent in by Lydia. I don't know if this is sunset or sunrise. Either way, it's it's very, very spectacular. Andy Ray from Odessa. We just saw the still image earlier. Here's the video clip that the still image came from. Again, I don't know if this is sunrise or sunset, but there was what looked like cornrows in the sky as far as he could see in all directions. That's what compelled him to get out his recording device and start recording the sky. Again, like rows of clouds going in all directions as far as he could see. So good video, Andy. Thanks for sharing. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, what's up, man? Appreciate it, guys. You guys are wide awake and on the ball. For real. You guys notice some amazing things. You really and truly do. Look at the shelf cloud. Moorhead, Minnesota sent in by Marvin. I mean, it's almost as if you can reach up and touch it. It's a very low, as long as, as far as you can see in both directions, and it's nearly touching the rooftops of these homes. And I have not adjusted this video. I adjusted the clarity. That was about it. That's how it looked. Almost like you could reach up and touch that thing. So another high-profile, low-riding shelf cloud that we're seeing pretty much on a daily basis. Here's another one. Not exactly sure of the location. This was shared, I think, on my Twitter or Facebook. I'm not sure, but it was a, another very spectacular-looking leading edge of a thunderstorm, a low-riding shelf cloud. This next photograph was sent in from Austria, and the viewer, Fossey, found it very odd. This was at sunrise. It was orange over here, and you can see a direct light source, which is the sun. Then over here to the right was what appeared to be a blue light source. Look at that. And that's in the elevations of Austria. So good observation. Look at that. Thanks for sharing. That's what she noticed. Orange over here. Looks like a light source. And then blue. Here's a bright orange sky sent in by Jerry from San Diego. I'm assuming that is a sunset, I would say, out over the ocean. Another spectacular shelf cloud. This was sent in by Cliff from Montreal. And again, this one, too, is very low. Not as low as the one we saw earlier, but a very high-profile photogenic shelf cloud. Tornado photo sent in by Susan from South Dakota. Look at that. Just amazing. These clouds here reminded me of comets in the sky near the sun. Photo taken by Connie from Idaho. Incredible. Stacy, Springport, Michigan. Purple pink sky with a rainbow intermixed in there. Just beautiful. Good observation, guys. Apache Junction received this photo today of a low riding pinkish gray cloud. Tish from Boca Raton, Florida. Clouds look like hearts in the sky, or at least one right there. Some more Mammatus clouds from Fort Collins, Colorado. Look at that. Photo sent in by Millie from France, and she just asked me what I saw here. You know, she noticed this 
feature in the sky that just didn't fit in with the rest of the clouds in the sky, and I agree. I don't really know what to make of it. It, it could be some sort of a odd-shaped roll cloud. That's the only thing I could think of, but it definitely doesn't fit in with the rest of the clouds in the sky. Now, these next photographs are from South Florida. This is the first of several that Julie sent in from a boat off the southern coast of Florida. Now you can see here this uh, really pretty, actually, like peach colored line in the sky, light pink. And then she notices this cloud off to her left. Now this isn't any ordinary cloud, it's the only one of its kind out here in this area. What you're seeing here is not the reflection of the moon or the sun, that's the reflection coming off of the top of that cloud. Look at that. And if you want to confirm wind shear out here in the Atlantic, off the southern coast of Florida, you can see some wind shear off the top of this large cloud that is glowing at the top. Look at that. And then after the glowing goes away, you're going to see something else at the top of the cloud. Just an amazing photograph from South Florida. Look at that. Okay, now that the glowing has subsided, this is what was left. What well, looks like a perfect like submarine or some sort of a disk sitting up there on top of the clouds. Look at that. Just amazing. Excellent photograph by Julie from South Florida. And all I did here was adjust the color and contrast. I didn't do anything to the photograph. It's still the same photograph. But I just brought forward some of the features of whatever this is. And it looks like a almost like a submarine there. Obviously it's not a submarine, but Looks like some sort of a large disk sitting up there behind the clouds. Look at that. Awesome observation by Julie from a boat out in South Florida, or off the coast of South Florida in the Atlantic. So once again, earthquake swarm continues, over 1,200 and counting, forming a perfect seven in Southern California. Next week, we could see the possibility of some sort of a tropical storm, slash cyclone in the Gulf of Mexico by Thursday around lunchtime. We're going to keep a very close eye on this situation, but once again, this is a long-range forecast. It can and will change, but either way, we're going to keep a very close eye on that. That's the last place we want to see any type of tropical storm activity. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.